I'm really excited to talk with this woman because uh, she comes highly recommended. She is the author of In Our Element, Using the Five Elements as Soul Medicine, S-O-U-L. She's an acupuncturist. She's also a PhD student of indigenous and diasporic psychology. We're gonna find out what that is as well. Let me welcome, I'm gonna say a doctor, Lindsay Fauntleroy, welcome. Give the lady some applause, <laughs> let's go. Yes, hi. Hi. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Okay. Yes. Um, the five elements. So mm -hmm. break it down. The, the impetus for doing in our element, which I like the play on that. Walk us through the book. Walk us through okay. it. So in our element is a book that's based on my years of teaching, my years of studying and working with uh, African spirituality, but also with East Asian medicine. You know, I'm a licensed acupuncturist. And when I started my practice, I'm working in Brooklyn primarily with women of color and thinking about, okay, people are coming in to see me once a month, twice a month, and they're getting their acupuncture, but then they're going back into their life and their life is actually where the problem is. Right. So I can be in the acupuncture clinic. I can move stagnation. We call it stagnant chi. We can move stagnant chi all day. But if you're leaving acupuncture and you're going back to a job where you're being, where you're facing microaggressive microaggressions, if you're going back to a relationship that isn't satisfying, all of that is going to affect what I see when you come back the following time. So working with in our element and doing the, the women's leadership programs was really about finding practical ways to give us tools to do some of this healing work on our own. You know, I call it soul first aid. It's affordable. It's accessible. You can bring it with you. You can bring it on a plane. You can do it in your home. You could do it at work. That's the idea of this book is how do we take this medicine that is big and deep and vast and steeped in so much indigenous wisdom and make it something that we can walk with and carry with and, and use in a practical way. We're going to break down some of the elements, but, you know, being black my whole life, um, the notion of meditation, mm -hmm. uh, acupuncture, <laughs> all of this is that's some other people's stuff, you know, therapy. You know, we were raised in these kind of uh, not draconian, but, you know, like <laughs> th this is not what we do. Right. So walk us through how you, Lindsay Fauntleroy, got introduced to acupuncture and then decided you're going to be a practitioner of it. Right. And I have to, even before I tell my story of how I came to this medicine, which was really organically, what I really am big on is a reclaiming because so much of the stuff that people are using in terms of alternative medicine, whether it's yoga, whether it's acupuncture, whether it's meditation, all of this stuff comes out of black and brown cultures. And so we've been socialized to kind of think of these things as other people's stuff but it's our stuff. And so reclaiming it, relearning it, reframing it within the context of our own lives is, is really what a lot of my work is about. How so, I came so teach, to wait, so teach, teach, teach the history. Uh -huh. Again, you know, when I think of yoga, you know, mm -hmm. I think of India, um, Lindsay, mm -hmm. who's in here is, is doing a yoga class in Nubia now. And I now think of it as African because of the way in which, you know, mm -hmm. the, the movement, I mean, it's the music, the everything. I don't think of it as an Indian practice anymore, you know, right, um, right. you're saying the same about acupuncture. So what's the African connection to acupuncture? Well, how I learned of the, of the connection was when I was teaching this work in schools. And even prior to that, I would say back in the late nineties, I had a, an Ifa reading, which is an African spiritual tradition. And in the reading the Baba Lao, the priest said to me, he said, you know, you have this relationship with Oshun. A lot of people know Oshun because Beyonce. Because of know, Beyonce, yes. Yes, yes. I'm here for all of that. Um, but he said, you know, Oshun governs acupuncture and East Asian medicine. So you might be drawn to that in the future. Now I was in my early 20s, didn't know what the heck he was talking about, never had acupuncture, nothing. Um, but then you fast forward 20 years and I'm in an infertility journey. I couldn't have children. I was told doctor after doctor, nope, it's not, not happening you're completely in menopause, even though you're in your early 20s. And that's how I was introduced to acupuncture. My, my first acupuncturist, um, Dr. Shadidi Kinsey, actually studied under Matulu Shakur in the Harlem Institute of Acupuncture. So acupuncture was very much part of, when you look at the Black Panther movement, um, they were doing acupuncture in Harlem as community healing, right? This, this untold story of, of the medicine. So there's a, there's a recent history with acupuncture, 
And then when I was doing my research for the book and for the classes that I teach, I came across the work of uh, Dr. Clyde Winters. And he has two books I, um, that I referenced a lot. One is called The Ancient Blacks of China. Another is called Ancient Black Civilizations of Asia. When we look at the work of Dr. Wayne Chandler, there's so much history of uh, of African people traveling the world, sharing their gifts, sharing their knowledge before uh, before we were brought here through the slave trade. And a lot of that history is buried. So um, I don't tend to think of the relationship uh, as a linear relationship. I, I don't remember. I was there. I don't remember what happened. But I do know that there are a lot of similarities in terms of the systems, the philosophies, um, the way they perceive the body, the way we perceive the body. And it is one of those medicines that has been preserved through through time. And so mm. we're able to access it. Same with yoga. You know, there is a huge movement to, I would say, westernize. I'm throwing up the air quotes. Westernize acupuncture, westernize yoga, make them all about the body and exercise and being fit. And when we go back to the roots and the lineages of those practices, they were really about spiritual cultivation and development. Um, and we see a lot of those those spiritual traditions across the continent as well. Um, I thank you for that. Uh, as as a person raised in this culture of, of America, the disconnect, and I and I imagine you know as I'm reading more and more that our the the ancestors that were here the last couple of hundred years who were forced into bondage, forced into death camps, forced into labor camps, and the horrific things that happened to them, they had to separate their minds and from their bodies. They had mm -hmm. to, to survive. Right. So, you know, when I go back and reread the half has never been told Dr. Edward Baptist talks about the evolution within a generation brought upon by torture that mm -hmm. allowed for people to pick 500 pounds plus co of cotton every day. There right. was a separation of the hemispheres of the brain to be able to just zone out and pick that cotton under that lash and not mm -hmm. think because if you had to think about your condition, you mm -hmm. may not want to be here anymore. Right? right. So I feel like for generations, black people in particular, those who have that as their descendancy, because I know for me, I separate my mind from my body all the time. I just mm -hmm. put my head down and I do whatever I got to do. And I'm not thinking about how is this affecting me? Am I stressed? I don't even acknowledge any stress. I'm like, I'm not stressed out, you know, but then my eczema, it's not even mine. Eczema may flare up. Now, full That's disclosure, right. I haven't had eczema in three years, two and a half years. And so maybe it's tied to being in traffic, cussing people out every day and then having to be around people which I haven't had to do in two and a half years. So I haven't mm -hmm. had eczema in two and a half. I'm just, I'm saying like, maybe that's connected and I got to sit in that. So even mm -hmm. when you talk about ac acupuncture or yoga, for us, the connection of mind and body as one is mm -hmm. as important as the connection of us, human being, human, human, as one, like That's I'm not right. an individual, I'm part of a whole. So you bring in an Ashun, the Yoruba, uh, the Orisha deity, one of the most powerful fertility water. She's all of the things, right? That's important for us to lean into. So I just want to say thank you for that, Dr. Fontenoy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I, you know, it's exactly right. There is nothing in an African worldview that is individual. It, it doesn't exist. We are collective. We are collective people. And so once you start separating body from mind and money, body from spirit and spirit from nature, you get yourself in a mess. And that is really the hallmark of Western thought is this separation, this Cartesian logic, this, I think, therefore I am. That's not true. <laughs> you know, you are not your thoughts, you know? And, and so we are coming to a place where we can start to remember and embrace some of the, the philosophies that, you know, to your point, you know, we did have to disassociate and separate mind and body, but we also know that there were those healers that were in the woods practicing the old traditions to keep us alive, you know, and, and very much in that era, if you were sick or diseased, um, your, your owner wasn't going to take you to a doctor unless there was some financial benefit of you being alive. And for most of us, unfortunately, in that time, we weren't seen as having essential value. And so who are we going to? We were going to the medicine men and women who were preserving the culture and the traditions and the medicines and the, the plant wisdom and the way to stay connected to nature and spirit for our healing, because that was really our only resource. Mm, we're talking with Lindsay Fontlevoy. She is the author of In Our Element, 
and it is using the five elements of uh, soul medicine. We're going to get into that in a second. What is acupuncture? Walk us through acupuncture as a practice and then tell us how you use it. Mm-hmm. what is it you know what's the process if I'm somebody I'm like I don't do needles I'm not trying <laughs> to, you're not poking me in the forehead with a needle sorry ma'am not happening I get tell that me a lot, why actually yes <laughs> yes you know I'm black I know what right <laughs> don't come at me with that um so I'll just uh take it back a, th- a few steps and just bring it back to what we already know so we think about a river and we think about there being a block in a river On one side of that block, everything is going to dry up because there's not enough water flowing. And on the other side of that block, there's going to be just too much stuff, stuff floating around, some extra trash. It gets gunky. And so you have to move that blockage in order for the river to flow and for each side to get the balance that it needs. The meridians are the same thing in our bodies. So our body has these rivers, these channels. I call them rivers of consciousness. We could call them you know, rivers of symptoms in the same way that the blood vessels have their little network of channels. The meridians are how energy or life force, so what the ancients called chi, flows through our body. And so what acupuncture is doing is it's looking for the places where there's a blockage and where things aren't balanced. Or uh, so if there's a blockage, it's going to show up in your body and your physical symptoms. It's going to show up in your mind, in your thinking, your thinking patterns. It's going to show up in your emotions, how you move through the different triggers that you face. We all know sometimes the same person cutting you off can either make you really mad or be no big deal. And right. that has either a you want to bite the tip of his nose off or you just going <laughs> to let it go. You just let it right? go. Same, yes. same trigger, right? So that all has to do with how that energy, that life force, that chi is flowing. And so acupuncture is about getting in there and making sure that all of those channels, all of those rivers, all of those meridians are flowing properly. So that's the acupuncture piece. We use the needles, there's certain pressure points. They each do different magical things. Um, they do not hurt because the needle is actually passing the pain perception, um, the pain sensors in the skin. So it's bypassing the nerves that would trigger pain. So a lot of times when I'm giving acupuncture, people are holding their breath and like, when are you going to start? And I'm like, I'm already done. Just go ahead and relax. And it it feels like a a soft massage from the inside because things start moving and regulating. So that's the first myth I'll clear up. Acupuncture does not hurt. It should not hurt. Um, It is actually a very gentle practice. And, um, and that's how it works. It's moving those, those channels. What I talk about in the book is because this is, again, self-care. If you can't get to an acupuncturist or you don't want to get any needles or whatever your thing is, uh, you like it, I love it, then do a pose, do a yoga stretch, do something that is going to move that energy, that meridian. And I show in the book specific poses that stretch certain meridians so that even if you don't want to get acupuncture, You can move those points. You can um, put essential oils on them. You can bring your attention to them. You know, there's a Mm -hmm. lot of ways to move energy. Acupuncture is one of them. I'm biased because it works and it's, it, it really works. But if that's not your thing, there's so many other ways to, to tap in. Where do you start when you tap in? Where, where, where's the first place that you go? And as you're talking, Lindsay Fauntleroy is here. Uh, Her book is in, in, uh, in our element, I imagine that there's some acupuncturists that don't have your grounding in the spirit mm. who are just going based on a chart of where to put needles. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Mm-hmm. All right, you're done. Mm-hmm. I'm imagining you're doing it differently. Where, where do you start on the body and why? I don't start on the body. Oh. I start in the psyche. And that is my particular lineage of training. I will say there are about, I can think off the top of my head, 40 different styles of acupuncture. They all use different kinds of needles. They all use different kinds of, you know, it's all based in the same medicine, Um, but it, it varies. There's some people that do a very physical muscle bound back pain, neck pain kind of thing. It works. I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. What I'm saying is that when a person comes to me, the first thing I ask is what's going on in their life. Mm -hmm. And usually the two things that bring people into my practice are money and honey. So something going on in their finances and or that feeling that they're not living fully into their gifts. 
that that they have these talents, they have this creativity, they have this business idea, and it's just not flowing. And then the honey is the relationships. You know, this my, my spouse isn't acting right, my kids aren't acting right, the co-workers aren't acting right. Money and honey. Uh, I can I can pretty wait, much wait, wait. People come to an acupuncturist for because their their money's not right, like <laughs> things aren't going right in their lives. Yeah, because if we go back, if we if we take it back to again, indigenous medicine. When you go back and you look at, say, uh, West African traditions, right, your ill health could be that you got, you know, malaria or you got sick, or it could be that someone in your family has fallen ill or your compound caught on fire. It's still, it's an illness. It's a circumstance. Mm -hmm. It is reflection that something is out of alignment. Some energy somewhere is not flowing correctly. And the same is true here. I start with the foundation that abundance, love, prosperity is our birthright. So if we're not experiencing that, then we have some work to do. And that work can be within the individual or for the collective, because the collective can also be an illness or a disease. Say it again. What's our birthright? Our healing, our prosperity, our love, our joy is our birthright. Abundance is our birthright. I love it. Um, Dr. Fauntleroy is here, Lindsay. Uh, S-A-Y-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y font on the Twitters, F-A-U-N-T, because the Leroy part was very long and I guess you couldn't get the whole <laughs> Lindsay and then the font Leroy. They cut off the, the Leroy. Twitter. I yeah, think they it cut was off. a race thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there will be no Leroy in this thing. All right, so you start in the mind by asking people when they come to you, mm-hmm. someone, and in in, I've been to, to acupuncture before I got my knees replaced you know, that was a suggestion, go get acupuncture. But I'm like, it's a physiologic. I have arthritis and I have no cartilage in between. I have no anterior cruciate and the, the, my knees are jacked up. How is it acupuncture? Well, it's going to help with the pain, but I'm still rubbing on bone. So mm-hmm. logically I came in with this is not going to work. And guess mm-hmm. what, Dr. Fauntleroy, it did not work at all. <laughs> oh, yes, it didn't work. It didn't work. So uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, I mean, so but what you're talking about is something deeper. Mm-hmm. And I imagine if I had, you know, if I came there with, a, you still weren't going to fix my knees or would you like, if I came to you, both my knees jacked up, uh, mm-hmm. have bone on bone arthritis. Mm-hmm. They looked at the x-rays. These are 65 year old knees and I'm not mm-hmm. even close to 65. What, what would you tell me? So the first thing I would acknowledge and honor is that we have different aspects of our body. Just like if you shine a light through a prism, that one light is going to spread out into the different colors of the rainbow. The same is true of our body. So the physical body is just one shade in that color spectrum of who and what we are. And so, yes, if your knees need to be replaced, as an acupuncturist, I'm going to tell you, you need to get these knees. You, you got to do something else. Like the acupuncture may help with your nervous system. It might help with your reaction to the pain. Every time you feel your knees, you might go into a whole inner dialogue about, oh, these knees and why isn't it's not fair. And so the acupuncture will help with that. But if your body is, your physical body has reached a point of deterioration, then you have to take care of that with the physical medicine. In the same way, if there is something that is going on in your heart space, in your mind space, then a physical medicine may not touch that, which is why we have a lot of examples of women going to a doctor and saying, this thing is is bothering me. I feel sick or nauseous or whatever. And then the doctor will look at the lab work and say, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. Well, yes, there is something wrong and you just can't find it or see it. And that was definitely my experience when I was trying to conceive and I was getting the acupuncture and I was doing the herbs and doing the yoga. It was like a full-time job, the healing work that I was doing. And I remember I went to an endocrinologist and he looked at my blood work and this hormone is too high and this one is too low. And he said, you are not ovulating anymore. You're done. And I said, I am ovulating right now. No, you're not. We went back and forth for about five minutes. And then finally he did a sonogram. He said, oh, look, you're ovulating. So we have to, especially when we consider that a lot of the lab results, a lot of the the medical standard, as we know with the the pharmaceutical industry, is based on a 150-pound white man. So the dosage (laughs) and all of those things. So 
the the ranges, the acceptable ranges for hormones, for certain chemicals in the blood is, is not always 100% accurate. We have to know our bodies intimately. And I believe that this type of medicine helps us to do that. It helps us to know our bodies intimately, to be present enough to when our body is changing, how our body is changing before it gets to the point of deterioration, because our mind and body are not separate, as you you know said in the beginning of the show. And so when there is something going on in our bodies, our mind will tell us, our spirit will tell us, we're just not really socialized to pay attention to those to those cues. And, and that's what I'm hoping the book helps to, to close that gap. 